Now, you know that we've spent some time covering the basics of candlesticks. We've introduced the three-line break charts. We've talked about how we incorporate some of the Western technicals. But we really were talking about one particular commodity group, which is the grains. And as we mentioned before, for a technique to really have validity, it needs to have basically a universal quality. So we're going to start to look at some of the other marketplaces. Brad, I believe, has put up a coffee chart. That's correct. Now, we're going to look at a couple of the softs. We're going to look at coffee, and we're going to look at cotton. These, to me, are markets that, because of the lack of liquidity, are a little bit more tricky in trading. But what you will find is that the patterns and the signals generated through these techniques are just as effective, OK? Now, is this a daily chart? This is. All right. Now, the one thing that we'll notice, and it's not that I'm trying to reiterate over and over again, although I am, is that consolidation is so easily defined with alternating candles. Uptrends are so easily defined when you have those successions of white candles. Downtrends, once again, visually, you can ascertain so much more information. Now, another thing that we notice, and as I look at a chart, I will always look at tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. Once again here, we have our doji. And as the market consolidated and moved up, you notice all these small bodies in here? Consolidation. Now, Brad's got the pointer right down here. Could we start at this and see if it's identified as a doji? The, this one here? No, the one prior to that, Certainly. please. Certainly. Once again, we get the long-legged doji line. Now, if you remember from the last example, it, it said to look for a market top, correct? Brad, could you read the text here? Certainly. This is a long-legged black doji line indicating that the closing price is below the opening price by a small amount. It says that this candle is created when the open and close are almost equal. Proper action because the stochastic percent D is at 21 and the stochastic percent K is at 26. Look for a potential bottom in the market. Now, let's realize this, that we are unaware of anything except that the market has been in a defined downtrend. So that if you're looking at a market that has been in a defined trend, be it up or down, that doji is going to be the first indication that the market may reverse. It does not mean that it's time to act, but it does mean that it's time to look for certain patterns to form from that. OK? OK. Now, it also creates a star. Now, remember, the definition of a star is a small body, meaning that the open and closing range is very narrow, and that it gaps above or below or above. Now, one thing that's important. Since the Japanese put so much emphasis on that open to closing relationship, you notice that this wick here does go into that prior session. The Japanese are looking at the relationship between the body and the body. In fact, there's only a few patterns that work off of lows and highs. And we'll show you some of those. But the distinction, what makes this a star, is not only that it's a small body, but it's that it gap below or above. And also, it can be white or black. Stars and umbrellas are the only two candle types where color is not essential. Okay. Now, it gave us an engulfing bearish line confirmation, which it negated anyways. And it's telling us that it's an oversold condition. And here we have making a nine bullish reversal. So we've seen the market come down. It's been in a defined downtrend. We get that consolidating candle of doji. And lo and behold, we get a sequential count of nine. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with sequential and Thomas uh, R. DeMarc's work, I'll spend a few moments talking to you about that. Making a nine is a very defined concrete pattern. What it does is it compares the close against the close four sessions prior. So let's say that, is this a daily chart? Mm -hmm. OK. 
so that it compares the close against the close four days ago. If the close is above the close four days ago, we have a count of one. If it does that nine consecutive days in a row, and they have to be consecutive, the belief is, is that the market is exhausting itself. In fact, there is a pattern called an 8 to 10 new price high, which is a Japanese candlestick pattern, which is in essence the same as the sequential theory. So we were able to see the doji and the nine, and that gives us a pretty good indication that the market might, in fact, hit a bottom, okay? Now if we move over, we've got that nine again. And now we're starting our countdown. What happens is, is once a nine is made, according to sequential theory, one of two things are going to happen. That nine is going to be the bottom of the market. It's going to reverse and move up. Or it's going to continue lower. According to Thomas DeMarc, he calls that the intersection. So at the point when it makes a nine, we want to determine, will it continue to move down, or will that become ultimate support? So this, it made the nine prior, and so now it's starting its sequential countdown, and that's one out of 13. Now, according to the theory, it, you'll very rarely see it go to 13. I found few examples. In most cases, if it goes through the intersection and continues down between a countdown of six and, say, nine, is when I will start to look for a bottom, okay? And bottoms are typically significant or sig signaled by what's called the DeMarc flip pattern, which we'd seen an example earlier. Do you want to explain for a little bit what yeah, a the flip pattern the is? Flip pattern, the, the flip pattern simply negates the countdown or cancels the countdown. A flip pattern occurs when the close of today, for example, is in, in the case of this, which is a bullish sequential pattern, a flip pattern would occur when the close of today is greater than the close of four days ago or greater than the close of the session that made the nine. That would account for a flip. In other words, what he's trying to do is to, to, to determine whether or not that trend is going to continue or if it's going to reverse. And just like the Japanese, he's defined it in highly defined mathematical formulas. Okay, that's correct. Now, our relative strength index is being monitored because it's gone below this line. So we've gotten yet another flag. Nothing has told us to buy this market yet, but now for the last three days, we've been getting warning signs that, in fact, we could have a bottom. Okay. I'd like to make a point as well. Something that's totally unique about the Japanese candlestick method is that the last three trading sessions from the area we're showing you near the, the beginning, February 5th, 6th, and 7th, have all been lower closing days, black candles. It's interesting that the Japanese candlestick technique can, even though we're seeing bearish trend, can tell you or warn you that the market is about to reverse. How many other technical techniques or Western techniques can take a bearish trending market and while the market is moving lower warn you that the market is about to bottom and possibly reverse. And very that, few. And that's a very interesting point. There is a pattern that's called a bullish black three gaps. And what it is is where you have a black candle on the following day it opens below creating a gap or what the Japanese call a window and then closes lower. On the next session, it gaps below it and closes lower. That is a bullish reversal signal. Because the Japanese believe that if it happens three times in a row, it has exhausted itself. I've been told that the reason a market turns around is more, there's more buyers than sellers. I have to quote Tom DeMarc on this. What Tom believes is that the last guy has sold. In other words, it's not that there's more buyers coming in there, it's that there's no one else willing to sell anymore. And the interesting thing is, as Brad pointed out, the Japanese have the uncanny ability to look at bearish scenarios and infer a change in direction. Okay? We've moved one uh, extra day further into the future, uh, February 8th, 1995. 
and we're all familiar with this signal, which is an engulfing bullish line. And again, one point I'd like to make is that the previous three sessions had all warned of a bottom near this low. And finally, two days after the first bottom uh, warning of a potential bottom occurred, an engulfing bullish pattern had occurred. Now, as Gary mentioned earlier, remember, to lend greater credibility, we look at the three rules of candlesticks, size, shape, and location. Well, the primary rule is size. We take a look at this signal. We look at the black candle here, which is the first candle in this pattern, is very small. It's got a diminished size, which is indicating a, a deceleration and bearish trend. And the acceleration of the bullish trend indicated by this white candle is clearly evident through the size. So this would be considered a very credible signal. Number one, because of its size. Number two, because it's an engulfing bullish pattern. And number three, because it's occurring at a market low. After a doji is formed. Correct. And one thing that we might want to bring in is we're going to now start to overlay some of the Western technicals on top of these charts to show you how they all kind of match together. Okay? And there we go. We've got that making a nine bullish reversal. Mm -hmm. We've set. got our setup and intersection and an RSI. Five separate indicators all saying the same thing using different approaches.